This is not your great, great granddaddy's bloom. My name is Andrew Hammond. Yeah, I have a, re <laughs> I have a really fantastic job. <laughs> For millennia, the only way that you could see would be climbing up a mountain, climbing up a tree. 1794, the Battle of Fleurs, the French Revolutionary War, almost all of the other European states against France. Abraham Lincoln, very, you know, very smart, very astute guy, he sees the utility of this. With Lincoln's patronage, Thaddeus Lowe becomes the chief aeronaut of the Union Army. Balloons are used in World War I as well because aircraft is just an emerging technology. The mighty airship, the pigeon, it's got a little camera attached to it. Then we get up to World War II, we have aircraft that can take photographs in a much more sophisticated way. The camera really changes the game. The Soviet Union, what's called a hard target, a very difficult country to conduct human intelligence operations. They build the U-2 spy plane. You could bring it out even more to satellites. After 9-11, this sees a big quantum shift in the use of drones, little drones the size of dragonflies, and then we come up to the modern day where we have the Reaper drones. So this might lead to the question, why, why is an analogue thing from 1794, why are we still using it? For everything that you can put in the air to capture intelligence, there's pros and there's cons. So the pigeon, for example, the pigeon's got a mind of its own. It's very difficult to make sense of the imagery afterwards. So eventually this is abandoned. People don't use pigeons any longer. But if you think about an aircraft, the pros of that, it can go in a straight line, you can direct it. The cons, well, it runs out of gas. You couldn't get an aircraft to just spend days and days flying over the United States. And intelligence is a thing called plausible deniability. If it's a Chinese military aircraft with a Chinese pilot, that game can't be played any longer because it's very clear what the object is. If we can see something, if we can touch something, if we can hear something, then it's within our sphere of understanding. But if it's, if it's cyber, if it's zeros and ones, if it's artificial intelligence, it's much more difficult for us to get our head around. So one of the reasons why I think the Chinese balloon became such a story is that people could see it with their own eyes. You can go out into your backyard and see a big gigantic balloon up in the sky, then you know, it's something that you, you can understand and you can think about.